At this time last year, the subject of today's video was voted the Big Ten Wide Receiver of the Year, was an All-American, and was expected to be selected as a Day 1 or Day 2 draft pick. Instead of going to the NFL Draft, he decided to come back to school for one more year to help his team, improve his draft stock, and finish out everything he had started. It seemed like a somewhat wise move on paper, but as we take a look at what's happened in 2021, it has been an absolute disaster for him. So far, his numbers have dropped, his team has been terrible, and the most depressing part is, his draft stock is tanking. In today's video, we're going to talk about a player who was a superstar in college and was supposed to be a high-end draft pick last year, but has seemingly made the wrong decision and it could haunt his career forever. But right before we get into it, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel, so be sure to quickly do that, smash that like button for the algorithm, turn on post notifications, and let me know what topic I could do next. Now, let's get started. At this point, you're probably wondering who the subject of today's video is, and it's none other than Indiana superstar wide receiver Ty Freifogel. But in order to understand why his draft stock has fallen so massively this year, we need to go back in time and see how he became a star to begin with. As someone who is a big Indiana football fan, this story is sad to see, and hopefully he proves us all wrong. But going back in time, football ran in Ty Freifogel's blood. His dad played football for the Ole Miss Rebels in the early 2000s, and in two years with the Rebels, he caught 18 passes for 194 yards and one touchdown. He never sniffed the NFL, but his son Ty became a big deal. They eventually moved to a town called Loosedale, Mississippi. Just over 3,000 people live there, and it's 20 miles away from the Alabama border. It's not exactly the biggest football stage in the world, but it's where Ty's roots were planted. His father played alongside Indiana University's eventual wide receivers coach, and this would play a major factor in his recruitment, but we will get to that later. Ty was always seen as a big-time athlete, and he eventually got to George County High School, where he played as a freshman. As a junior, they got a new head coach, and he went and watched Ty play a basketball game one day. He said he saw Ty drive under the basket and finish with a two-handed dunk, and said, quote, It looked like he jumped about four feet off the floor and you could just tell that his athleticism and the way he carried himself that he had the potential to be a really special player. He was a very special player as during his senior year he caught 89 passes for 1,432 yards and 14 touchdowns and because of that he was a first team All-State player and was named to the 2016 Mississippi Alabama All-Star game. In that 2016 season he helped lead George County to its first state playoff appearance in six years and he was a pretty big deal. His head coach said, quote, he got better each week, and he really, really devoted himself to be the best football player he could. Of course, you look at him now, and he's doing tremendous, and that has a lot to do with his work ethic and his attitude and how he carries himself, and you could see those things when he was in high school. On the recruiting scene, though, Ty was not seen as that big of a deal. He did receive offers from Indiana, Ole Miss, and Idaho, and both South Carolina, Mississippi State, and Southern Miss were also potentially interested, but never ended up offering him. His recruitment would come down to Indiana and Ole Miss, and the Rebels were the heavy favorite going into signing day. Momentum would start to change after a late visit to Bloomington. Eventually, Ty committed to Indiana on National Signing Day and had this to say, quote, I've been having a good feeling all day about Indiana and how it was the place for me. I talked to my family before the coaches came. They came and sat down with my family and my grandmother, and they talked to everybody, and I finally put it out there and told them, and I couldn't hold on to it much longer that I was going to be going to Indiana. At the time, the Hoosiers were in a really bad spot after Kevin Wilson was fired, and they're one of the worst Power 5 programs ever, but he had this to say about Tom Allen and the future of the program. The motto of the weekend was breakout. Everybody was saying breakout and fire up at Indiana, and that they wanted to build something special there. They would need a lot more than Ty to become good, but as I talked about earlier in today's video, Indiana's wide receivers coach had a huge role in his recruitment and is a major reason why he went to Indiana. He had this to say about Ty, quote, I was going to take him at Ole Miss before I left, and because of the relationship, he followed me up to Indiana, and all that hard work has eventually panned out for him. But I always thought he had the potential to be a very special player from the beginning. Obviously, some of these quotes are in retrospect after he broke out, but it still holds true. When it came to Ole Miss, Ty's dad was a little bit upset, as he did want him to go to the Rebels, but at the same time, he wanted what was best for his son, and Ty wanted to start his own way and thought Indiana was the place for him to go. He was an unheralded recruit who was headed to a football program that was one of the worst in the country, but Ty would eventually become a superstar. This would end up happening, but 24-7 sports did not rank him very highly. He was only a three-star recruit, the number 243 wide receiver, and the 1,712th best player in the class of 2017. Not the biggest name, but he would shock everyone. 
In 2017, Freifogel would not play a whole lot for the Hoosiers, and the Hoosiers weren't really that good. They ended up going 5-7, with their best win coming on the road against Virginia. At the time, they did not have a very good quarterback, as it came down to Richard Lego and Peyton Ramsey, and the team was in complete development mode. As a freshman, Freifogel literally caught one pass for 13 yards. In 2018, though, things would start to get a little bit better. Peyton Ramsey was the established starting quarterback, true freshman Stevie Scott had broken out at running back, and Freifogel became one of the better receivers on the team. He caught 29 passes for 381 yards and 3 touchdowns, and the talent was obviously there, but he would need more opportunities. 2019 would be when this would happen, as this would be a breakout season for the Indiana Hoosiers. Watt Fillier became the top receiver, Peyton Ramsey became one of the better quarterbacks in the Big Ten and the defense had started to become one of the better units in the conference. The Hoosiers ended up winning five Big Ten games, and they also won three non-conference games, so they finished with an 8-4 and four regular season record, as this was one of the best years in school history, and they would be going to a bowl game. Unfortunately, they lost in a heartbreaking game to Tennessee, but Fry Fogel had a breakout junior year. He caught 45 passes for 604 yards and three touchdowns, and now he was starting to become one of the better players. Watt Fillier would come back in 2020, Michael Penix would become the established quarterback, and Stevie Scott was a veteran running back presence, and the ingredients were there for Indiana football to break out. As we all know, Indiana would break out in 2020. It started in week one when they beat number eight Penn State at home, and while this was somewhat controversial at Michael Penix's two-point conversion, it went down as a win, and Indiana jumped into the polls. In week two against Rutgers, Freifogel would catch his first touchdown of the year, as he'd catch four passes for 55 yards and one touchdown. Two weeks later against number 23 Michigan, Freifogel would have the game of his career so far. He caught seven passes for 142 yards and a touchdown, and helped them beat the number 23 Wolverines. Against Michigan State, he absolutely went off. He caught a career-high 11 receptions for 200 yards and two touchdowns, and now Indiana was 4-0, going into a matchup with number 3 Ohio State. This game came on the road, but it would end up being Freifogel's best game of his career, and how he got put on the radar for the 2021 NFL Draft. Against Sean Wade and the Buckeyes, Freifogel caught seven passes for 218 yards and three touchdowns, as the Hoosiers barely lost on the road, and Freifogel put his name out there. He averaged 31 yards of reception and started to become a household name. His production was limited in their last two games, as he only caught three passes combined against Maryland and Wisconsin, but he helped lead Indiana to one of their best seasons ever as they went 6-1. He ended up playing against Ole Miss in the Outback Bowl, and he finished that game with three catches for 34 yards. During the 2020 season, Fry Fogel had broke out as he caught 37 passes for 721 yards and seven touchdowns, and seemed to play the best against the best teams. Because of that, he was named the Big Ten Wide Receiver of the Year, a third-team All-American, and was expected to be selected in the 2021 NFL Draft. Now comes the decision that would change the course of his football career. He decided to skip the 2021 NFL Draft and come back to help Indiana have a big year. As many of you guys know, Indiana began the 2021 season ranked, but they were quickly pushed out of the polls after they got murdered in Week 1 by Iowa. The season has been an absolute disaster for the Hoosiers as they narrowly lost to Cincinnati, got killed by Penn State, lost a close one to Michigan State, and then since then they basically got blown out in every single game, and they are currently 2-8 with an 0-7 mark in the Big Ten. They've been arguably the most disappointing team in college football, as they started out ranked and are one of only two Power 5 schools to not beat another Power 5 school. A lot of this can be blamed on the offensive coordinator Nick Sheridan, the fact that Michael Penix has played bad and is once again dealing with an injury, and maybe Fry Fogel wasn't all that good to begin with. In 2020, he's only had one decent game. He caught his only touchdown pass against Iowa, and besides a 10-catch performance against Western Kentucky, he has not really been a factor. So far in the year, he has 43 catches for 496 yards and one touchdown, and that is just not going to cut it. In terms of his 2022 NFL draft stock, it has seemingly went into the ground, as I don't really see him on any big boards, and as of right now, he's going to be an undrafted free agent at best. It's sad that he went from the Big Ten Receiver of the Year in a potential Day 2 selection to a guy who's now going to go undrafted on one of the worst teams in the country. It just goes to show you that timing is everything with college football, and when you can take advantage of your draft stock, I think players should leave. This is a sad story that other players should learn from, but I do believe Ty has the talent to be an NFL player. He's just going to have to be put in the right situation and make the most of his opportunities. What do you guys think, though? Who is another player whose draft stock has died in 2021? What do you think is going to happen to Ty Freifogel? And what is a topic I could do in my next video? 
be sure to let me know down in the comment section, smash that like button if you want to support today's video, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.